Now, you can't really see what's going on in the stringer from so far away, but it, it's got a dark side and it's got a light side. So I'll take um, a piece of dark glass and we'll say a piece of maybe this color, and I'll put them together and pull them together so that there's a pale side and a dark side to the stringer. I also like to make sure that I have some very skinny stringer for the, for the twigs and some slightly thicker stringer for the trunk, but it all needs to be pretty fine because if there's thickness in the stringer, you're gonna have trouble with, your, with the delicacy of your work. Here we go. I keep the bead under the flame and I put the stringer in the flame and I'm going to just draw the trunk of the tree and I'm going to make one branch. And I sort of twist my string as I go because the pale color in it will eventually become the knots in the wood. You have to every now and then kiss the other side of the bead so that you keep the heat right. I'm going to put a nice big branch up there. Up there. You kind of flame cut it. Another one through here. Another one going down there like that. There we go, and then I kiss the other side with the flame. I'm going to put in a few little, well, I think I'll put the... Now make sure that you really... I've got the stringer in my teeth, so if I sound funny, make sure that you really attach that glass, because if you don't, you're putting the tree on the other side, and then you come back to check this one, you hit it with the flame, and all those little twiggy things just jump off because they weren't attached properly. They're just kind of shocked. So now I'm going around the other side and I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to give this tree just a... You have to make that, that trunk a little gnarly. And just go up here like that. Put on that branch. Put another one in here. Another one here. Let's see if I can show you this. See? See how it's going? It looks a bit sort of froggy, but it'll be all right. And then you go up around here like that. So you just draw. You just draw. And then you need to put in some roots down at the bottom. Touch all those branches. Make sure they're all well stuck down. Go down to the other side. Put in your roots. That's right. Then I'm inclined to take the thinner part of the stringer. I've gone to the other side. I made it thinner at one end, so I'm going to put in some twigs, some thinner branches. I know it's difficult for you to see, but you see it's coming along. There we go. And there. Now, this, this part of the tree, I'm going to kind of heat it up and then show it to you. There, see, it's like, it's like a little I can put another branch down here to balance it, but you know, trees aren't always balanced. And I'm going to the other side and put my flame up just a little bit and add some twigs on this side. Like that. Now at this point you say to yourself, how is this ever going to become a really beautiful tree bead? Well, it's the leaves that do it. So that's what we're going to do next. Just warm all those branches up. Make sure they're all well attached and get them sort of melted into the matrix. Now you'd be surprised how the leaves are done. All right. Let's give it a little. All right, now I'm going to grab some green. Now there's two different greens in here, sometimes three, which means I can put three different colored leaves on at the same time. And this is how it's done. You just go in through the flame and start dabbing in to your bead and just get them even and around and think leaf. You know, you've got to th be thinking really carefully about the fact that you are making a tree and put those leaves in. Now these were very pale. I'm going to put some darker ones in in a minute because you're going to practically cover up your branches. The branches are just the skeleton of the tree. And leaves are the, the dressing. Now I'm going to grab a darker green. It's a little thicker, but I can make the points really small, the leaves really small. There we go. More leaves. Now you can decide what kind of trees you do. Sometimes I make pine trees. This is more of an oak. 
Always remember to go to the other side and make sure everything stays warm. And just keep dabbing that leaves on. Don't be afraid, just do it. But try to make them as small as possible. You don't want to leave any great big blobs there. And on they go, on and on and on. That's right. Now we're getting much closer to this, to finishing the bead. All right, this has got some stronger colors in it. There we go. These trees are so magical when they're done. And I love to think that there are going to be lots of glass bead makers making tree beads because we need to remember how many of them are disappearing. And if we all wear tree beads, maybe the consciousness about them will expand. Oh, yes. I reckon that's just about there. Now, you need to... Um, Sort of be careful how you burn them in. You don't want to have them hanging out in little blobs that can be knocked off. You don't want to get them too melted in. Now, here's another little trick of mine. Sometimes if I get some blobs that are too big, I sort of break them down. I'll tell you, Jim Smersich taught me this. God bless him. He's taught me so much. That is a master glass worker, let me tell you. A master. And you can sort of break down the, break down those uh, blobs so that they. Now I have made a, a tree bead into which I put apples, with red, but you're going to have to make sure that those the, the, the blobs that you put for apples are really small because look how far away this tree is really, and if you make the apples in clear red, they'll catch the light when you when you're in the sun and that's really beautiful. So, now there's one last little trick. Have you noticed in my beads that I usually have knots in the trees, in the tree trunk? Here I am with the glass in my, held in my teeth again. While I just adjust this, I sort of hold a string in in my teeth. There we go. All right, so how I get the knots in the trees? Quite simple. I go in. And I very, very carefully, with a very tiny point on the glass, give it a tiny turn. And I have to kind of blow it to break it off. And on the other side, too. A little tiny turn in the trunk, like that. And it just makes a knot in the wood. I sometimes tap it a little, but you don't want to do too much of that. It will flatten out the whole thing. Oh, yes. Very sweet. Keep looking at it. Make sure you haven't left any branches too naked. And now, all I have to do is sign it. Now, you can, um, you could take some, you could take some, um, green and you could dab around the bottom and make some plants. I mean, it's up to you, you know. It's just, it's just a fairly simple little tree bead. Now, I'm going to take my signature chip and my tweezers, keeping it always in the flame. Look at the profile of your bead, make sure that it's, it's balanced, and if it isn't, keep going back, I'm breaking these things down a little bit. There we go. Now I take a little signature chip, put it here. Make sure it's the right way round, because it can do either KDW or KDM. We don't want KDM. Warm up the spot you're going to apply it to. Pop it on. Now, don't just put it right in the flame um, for too long. Just dab it in the flame. And when you pull it out, let it cool a little before you touch it. Because if you don't let it cool, you will smudge your initial. But if you bring it out of the flame, let it cool for just a moment so that the signature gets a little skin on it, then you can push it into place. So, my friends, let's see.